years ago, for the very first time, I uh, attended an event called Bardic Madness, which is out in your bedroom. And one of the challenges I got sort of dragooned into said, do something that uh, you don't normally do, something new. Well, I don't sing, and I wasn't about to start. Uh, I don't juggle and play an instrument. I doubt I'd be able to learn one in the next 30 minutes. So this relegated me to the uh, final bardic skill to fall back on, which was, of course, poetry. Now, I've never actually written a medieval poem, and this may be the only one I ever write. But uh, so I sat down with, with a uh, pencil and a pad of paper. And uh, roughly 25 minutes later, this is what I came up with. Sir James the Knight had set his sight upon a lady fair. Up in her castle tower did he spy her in her lair. If only we could meet, he sighed. I know our love would bloom. But I know not who rules this place. How shall I reach her room? But being bold, he strode up forth unto the castle gate, and pounding with male fist, he cried, I'm here to seek my mate. The guardsmen there sent for their king, who came down to the door, and looking down upon James asked, What do you come here for? I come to seek a wife, said James, the one up in your tower. I'd wed her now this very day, and take her to my bower. The king scowled down upon the man who stood before him now, and in dark tones he did pronounce, This I shall not allow. My daughter, she is not for you, you plain and simple man. You need to win her by great deeds, and I don't think you can. Now go away, you silly knight. This door you shall not pass. Then signal to his guardsman, who threw James out on his ass. Now rising up and dusting off, he looked up in the air. Tis more way than one, quoth James, to reach my lady fair. He shed his helmet, belt and sword, then stripping off his mail. He strode forth to the vine-clad walls, and there began to scale. A third way up, then half he rode towards his desired mate, but then discovered there the vines would not support his weight. Again the ground did greet him hard, again he groaned and rose. That didn't work, so I must find a new way, I suppose. He hurried to a nearby farm, and there a ladder borrowed. If this won't work, James told himself, I shall be greatly sorrowed. He set it firmly to the wall, and glancing one more time upon his quarry far above, he now began to climb. Up and up did he ascend toward she who him besotted, but near the top he found the rungs had been completely rotted. He flailed about with arms and legs. Alas, with no salvation, and once again the ground below gave savage ministration. For some time he lay prostrate, stars dancing in his head, then all at once he sat erect. Aha, he loudly said, I think my mind has come upon an answer to this mystery. And if it works, I shall go down the greatest night in history. Thus went he off for three days hence. But then came the result as slowly down the road he came, pushing a catapult. I see from your expression you have some doubts this is going to work. <laughs> He set it down upon the green and aiming it with care, he cranked it back, then climbed to sit where stones normally share. He pulled a lever and the arm did launch him across the space. Alas, the range was set too short. The wall greeted his face. <laughs> <laughs> when consciousness returned, he cried, just one more try I'll need. A few steps closer to the wall, then surely I'll succeed. Now nearer to the castle wall, <coughs> I think I hit a mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> now nearer to the castle wall, again he wound it tight, again he climbed the board and pulled and set off on his flight. The view he had spectacular as o'er the walls he soared. Then hundred yards beyond he saw the ancient pine tree horde. <laughs> they swiftly rushed upon him now as if a great green wall. The first twelve branches that he struck did almost break his fall. Now on the forest floor he lay, lights dancing in his eyes, while far behind gray castle walls did mockingly still rise. Ha, bruised and battered, James now knew 
his hopes for love were sunk. He shrugged but once, then headed home, where he became a monk. <laughs> ah, that was excellent, Thank Ellis. I, I, I must give you my standard disclaimer that any resemblance between Sir James and a certain Wiley Coyote is not entirely coincidental. <laughs> <laughs>